Cambridge Muslim College, training the next generation of Muslim thinkers. Thank you very much, uh, Yaqub, and welcome everyone. Uh, we welcome you on behalf of our trustees. Our chair at the moment, uh, Leila Demiri, is a Trinity Hall person and is uh, sending you her blessings uh, from her current professorial position in Tübingen in, in Germany. And this is, as you know, the second of our conferences on linked themes. Uh, this weekend we will be pondering the uh, plumbing the depths of the topic artificial intelligence and consciousness. A few words about who we are and why we are the, the platform uh, for this event. Um, unlike um, most other institutions in this city, we are extremely young, a kind of infant really in Cambridge terms. We began operation only nine years ago. But unusually for a recent institution, we started off uh, in a rather old-fashioned kind of way. Rather, as Cambridge colleges began uh, seven, eight hundred years ago, as small groups of theologians wanting to get in a huddle, looking for ways of speaking sense about the large and often difficult claims made by religious faith. What makes our institution still more unusual uh, and this conference is, in a certain way, an emblem of that, uh, is that we seek a reasoned understanding of faith in an Islamic, not a Christian, idiom. That makes us even more eccentric in Cambridge terms. Old-fashioned, though, faith often seems and sounds, bringing Islam to the table actually is rather an up-to-date, uh, if unusual, thing to do. Cambridge is a community where scholars converse seriously in a way that ultimately serves and enlightens the society in which they live reflects the demography and the diversity of wider British society, which is changing apace. And Muslims are now Britain's largest, majority, largest minority and are often anxious to join the existing conversations to see what happens when the winnowing winds of modern thought are directed at or against their systems of thought and also, just possibly, to find ways of reciprocally enriching the city's very long-standing debates about issues which, like those which we are coming to grips with today, actually matter a good deal. <clears throat> now, our college is not a seminary. Um, that's why we're in this city. <clears throat> we do not expect or impose any kind of given creedal position of our students or scholars. There are plenty of other Muslim places where one can find that. Instead, we insist on keeping our doors and our windows open. And this is, in fact, exactly why we chose to be in Cambridge, where for centuries some of the most vital and challenging conversations between faith and science and philosophy have been worked out. We are seeking uh, challenges. We are looking for trouble, if you like. We recall, and again, this might be a theme which will... Uh, recur in our discussions today and tomorrow that Islam, which is stereotypically figured uh, as the West's dark other, has in fact very often been its most recurrent and significant uh, conversation partner. Medieval Cambridge curricula owed a debt to Muslim philosophical and scientific writings. Undergraduates knew about Anselm, but also about Avicenna. In the 17th century, the Cambridge Platonists were fascinated by Averroes' doctrine of a common soul, or at least by their particular understanding of it. Uh, three Cambridge men in particular considered themselves indebted to this doctrine about the mind which reached Cambridge from Muslim Spain. They were Ralph Cudworth, John Smith, and Nathaniel Culverwell. Medics, too, were part of this exchange. At Addenbrooke's, a staple of the curriculum was the continence of Abu Zakaria al-Razi, which also has things to say about the role of mind and emotion in uh, diagnosis and healing. So Islamic civilization has, in past centuries, made itself useful here, and it's our determination to try and revive and perhaps even surpass those early precedents. The conference which we're going to be enjoying today and tomorrow is, as I say, the second which uh, we have organized on a scientific topic. As such, we have been careful to explain to everyone that the science or the best discussions about issues which remain fiercely and fascinatingly contested stays at the center, 
while the Islamic theological ramifications and reactions take the form of a gloss or a series of reflections. In line with the driving philosophy of our college, we are not venturing a set of solutions to the questions being asked by science in this area of cognition. Instead, we recognize that both science and religious philosophy harbor internal disagreements on issues such as the nature of consciousness. The religion-science dialogue cannot be allowed to become some kind of zero-sum game, nor must it ever be content with closure. Instead, we seek to discover uh, what it means to discuss the same issues in two registers, two vocabularies, traveling together on the same path, ultimately enjoying the journey and hoping to become better thinkers wherever the road may turn. On the diversity of scientific theories here, I am hardly qualified to pronounce. I note that there's no shortage of fierce anti-Cartesians who agree with Daniel Dennett uh, that our thoughts are information-bearing events in the brain, since that's all that's going on. MRI scans show that different types of mental processes happen in different parts of the brain. A severe reductionism nowadays, challenging to religionists, is fashionable. But the sheer difficulty of the concept of consciousness seems to produce many dissidents. Consciousness certainly needs the brain, but for many, our introspection seems to generate a mode of knowing that simply is not reducible to observable brain events. For many, religious or secular, some sort of dualism, however implicitly, perhaps materialistic in the end, still seems to be helpful. So Muslim thought, is no more united on this difficult issue of consciousness. The heritage, particularly in classical, what we call Kalam theology, is rich and suggestive, but Muslims do not and never have spoken with one voice. Among the theories, one notes certain recurrent patterns, present already and in rich abundance in medieval thought, some of which are certainly irretrievably quaint, but others of which are of abiding interest and I think do deserve to be reframed in contemporary and defensible ways. Muslim scripture directs much attention to the question of ethics and thus to the mind, which makes moral choices, and to the complex and among the commentators unresolved relationship between ruh, spirit, and nafs, self. Through terms such as the famous flying man argument proposed by Avicenna as proof of the mind's capacity to be itself in isolation from sense perception, the principle of knowledge by presence, Ilm Khodori, found an important part in Islamic psychology. The system establishes the reality of mind by accepting the intuition supplied by experience as a first order truth. Intention, which for the likes of Elizabeth Anscombe here in Cambridge, lies at the heart of the philosophy of mind, is the moral core of our activity. As a hadith, a saying of religion's founder, says actions are by intentions. Today, some Muslim theologians, such as Mahdi Ha'iri, continue to treat this concept as foundational. Others, however, incline to a skepticism about the reality of the human self, which at times can seem almost Buddhistic. It is a diverse tradition. But I don't propose to say anything more about this. Our purpose today, as I indicated, is to be hosts, to be hospitable, to listen, and to learn, and to provide a free space in which ideas can be explored. In the contemporary religious world, and also, it sometimes seems, in a modern secular academy where measurable practical outcomes are demanded by government funding bodies, such a space is, I think, uh, insufficiently populated. But here we are, and we're grateful to you all, and particularly uh, to Dr. Yaqub Chowdhury, our convener, and also to uh, our funders, the Templeton Foundation, for their kind support. But also to everyone who's come to instruct and to share their vision over what I think promises to be an extremely stimulating weekend. Thank you. Cambridge Muslim College, training the next generation of Muslim thinkers.